Yeah, probably are the ones who physically be able to and I and I will let you know by the end of the day where they could. But there isn't a rule that there has to be an attribution. Okay. Because the question I got is whether or not whoever submitted this, I'm assuming it's a lawyer. Uh, it looks like something a lawyer would yeah, do. Yeah. Whether or not the lawyer or the lawyer's law firm is involved at all in any of the defense of what we're dealing with here. I don't know that either. We'll find that out. Like I said, I'm not sure who, who came up with that. Like all of these, sometimes we uh, have people assist us uh, in things, and I will find out who drafted that thing. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I just have a copy of that. Do you want to have the page to get a copy of it? I'm part of the building. Part of the building. Right. Um, if, if I can, uh, exactly how far back does this go? Did the legislation pass as it? How far back? Oh, no. That's right, Kitty. How far back is it? Well, I don't know recently whether there have been any other cases in which companies have sued products made over 100 years ago, but any product that over 100 years ago. Right, I mean, it's kind of bizarre. It's one of the bizarre things in this case outside of the curbing of the bill, the idea that. <laughs> think about that. You could make a product in 2011, 2012, right now, and, and you could be sued for what you made in 2012. You could be sued in 2130. I mean, who would make a product of that kind of thing? Don't you think the courts would, would take all of that into consideration? Well, this is a very bizarre court decision. I mean, as uh, Senator Zipper said, um, we're the only court in the country to reach such a strange conclusion. So uh, I hope in the future we don't have dramatic changes in the law 120 years after we make the product. Uh, okay. Senator Zipper. Yeah. You talk about being against retroactivity, but this bill creates retroactivity. Yeah, but no, no, no. It, it creates, it well, it creates retroactivity as far as, I wouldn't say retroactivity, it changes uh, procedurally how you handle a lawsuit. There's nobody in this room who, if they can show that a company produced paint, and that company, uh, as I understand, um, no, no, I'm just, just talking about the retroactivity. Let me play. Doesn't this change the rules after the game has started? This isn't fair. You're changing the rules after the game has started. There's lawsuits pending, and you're saying, well, those lawsuits pending no, are going to change the rules. It's more of a procedural thing. It's like it's, um, well, that's procedural. It's like you change a judge halfway through a court case, which could happen. I mean, you know, that doesn't mean that, it, it doesn't mean that you lost your right to something. I mean, if you can show that the ABC company but came in some house and should have known better. Oh, wait a minute. Aren't you changing the rules after the game has started? I'm, I'm a lawyer, you're a lawyer. We get into court, we set up a case to try the jury and we have to you're, 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 you're changing the rules, but not the rights. I'll put it that way. You're changing the rules, but not the rights. Well, wait a the rules, <laughs> the rights, are changing. No, they're very different things. They're very different things. I mean, there's a difference between rules and rights. We're changing a rule, but we're not changing a right. Right? You still have the, you still have the right or the ownership or whatever, you know, uh, to collect X amount of money and to file a lawsuit from from X company. Or we're changing the idea where you can uh, put everybody, all these different companies on the hook. Senator, you and I are lawyers. I'm saying you prepare a case for trial. You get ready to. You introduce witnesses, you get in, you're ready to go to court, and then all of a sudden they say, we're changing the procedure, you're changing the rules. Is that fair? Yeah, when the old rules are bad. I'll tell you an example, uh, uh, Senator. Um, when the court changed this, when the court changed what anybody ever would have dreamed, uh, uh, this contribution liability, risk contribution liability, that was a huge change for companies that were not local. And that was just a horrible decision. In addition to being an outlier decision, nobody got enough of it. After the fact, a company that, you know, thought they had never no liability under the sun, all of a sudden is on the 
a liability only for the small amount of paint they produce. It's on the hook for everything. And that was a horrible court decision. In addition, it was a morally repugnant decision that you were retroactively applying liability. Um, 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 this, this, all you're doing is changing what amounts to almost a step about procedural rules in court. I mean, that doesn't change the fact that you can file a court case if you can show it, a child was damaged, if you can show that this company produced the pain, if you can show that this pain caused the child to suffer some health problems. Um, you can still do all those things. Okay. Isn't it possible that when you change the rules, that you in effect make moot the case, the case that's in court? Quiet. Yeah. Well, I guess that would be up to any individual uh, attorney to explain to his clients. Well, all right, so aren't we in effect, I mean, not only are we changing the rules, aren't we in effect saying that we possibly making moot the case that's in court? I don't know. I mean, I suppose you could say. But that's that, not fair, is it? Well, I, I think this whole bill is about fairness. You mean to tell me that if there was a paint company that was in existence in 1900, and that paint company has been bankrupt for 70 years, and all the time we find cases in which there's an injury and that person is judgment proof or whatever. So all of a sudden we come up with this new cockamamie theory of law, and some other paint company has got to pay the liabilities for a paint company that's been bankrupt for 70 years. I mean, that is the most absurd, unethical thing I, I can imagine. That's and that's what you're going to expect. I think, do you want to follow, ask the follow-up, Senator Erkenbach? Yeah, um, a couple of, uh, just picking up on what, what Fred's talking about. And again, I'm not a lawyer, you are. Uh, you are, or you are. Neil, you're not a lawyer, right? Okay. All right, let's go sit on that side of the table. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to have, I'm, trying to have I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding, perhaps because I'm not a lawyer, with the rules and the rights. You go to court, this, these are the rules and the rights, these are the rules you have to abide by, these are the rights that, that the defendant, the complainant have, that's what you have to play by. This legislation appears to come in and change things dramatically. So to put it in terms that I understand, let's say there's a football game between the Packers and the Giants. And you uh, go over the rules beforehand, you flip the coin, you kick the ball off, and New York, because it's New York, doesn't like the rules because the Packers might be winning, so they're able to change the rules halfway through the game. How do you expect the game to move forward? How do you expect this to move forward when, when cases are being built on what the law currently is. It's like going back and, and, and changing the rules for anything once it's in stature or once it's, once it's in place. How, how is that supposed to work? It's going to work very simply. How? You're going to adjust to, the, uh, adjust to this change in the law. Or throw the, or, or throw the cases out because they don't have merit anymore. Oh, they're going to have the same merit they always had. <laughs> they're going to have the same merit in this if you can prove damages. If you can prove that a company should have known about those, as I understand it, no one that uh, their product could cause damages, uh, you can still try to sue that company. Okay. All right, and then the other thing I want to get back to this memo, because obviously what Ledge Council has to say to all of us in memos, you know, it, we, we cherish, we, we really value what they have to say. Well, so there seems to be. I respect them, I don't cherish. All right, so there seems to be. It would seem to me that trying to find out where this particular piece of paper came that was submitted into the file and we're, we're, we're track that is down. extremely important. So I would hope, I don't want the end. We got all day to find it. I don't know. My Lance is around here, but somewhere if he's listening downstairs, we'll find out. We'll I would hope, Mr. Chairman, that before the end of the day, before this committee hearing is done, we can find out where this came from because it's extremely important. Because if it, if it came from just some non unbiased lawyer or law firm out there that doesn't have a stake in this case one way or the other, that's one. But if it came from a law firm that is representing a defendant or could be representing a defendant, that, that's a whole other thing. And it's, and it's submitted into the bill jacket, which, again, without a name, is, is I've never seen it before. So I would hope that by the end of the committee hearing we'll find out where it came from. I hope so. Now, just so I can help myself, I'm going to get a copy of that. I just want to see what you're referring to. I just want that briefly. So why don't we... Uh, 
I think Senator Risser has a follow-up. Senator Vermont, we've got your request.